Hey, um, remember when, um, there was a bunch of, um, tweets going around saying the United States of America shouldn't be making, uh, movies based on, um, them saving the world from this coronavirus stuff? Yeah, they didn't listen. Huh. Also, I found one about coronavirus zombies, so that's just what we need from Russia. Much, much, much later. Never mind, I found a new one. It comes from England, and again, it has zombies. Thanks, England. You asshat. There are three of these virus movies, and yes, they have to have it in the title in order to make some sort of money. No, I'm not talking about documentaries on the virus or any news coverage. I'm talking about actual movies that have some acting effects and or plot. I said and or. I'll go over these three and we'll take shots whenever they say COVID, virus, or corona. Is that the disclaimer song? Ain't now gonna try it at home. do 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 Hey now, don't try it. Don't you dare try it. You might die if you do this at home. Do, 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 do. This was released in the UK, but was created in Spain. I don't know, IMDb said so. And the newest movie to come out, so why not review this one first? We open up with a bunch of voiceovers talking about climate change and global warming until it gets to the virus. It's not specified in the beginning of this, but from how it talks, it seems like the virus was found on Antarctica, like, when? And it was brought back for testing, but soon, and somehow, I do mean somehow, became contagious, and the name Code 21, or COVID-21, became a thing, and zombies. Nope, that's pretty much it. No, but my real issue is that whenever they talk about the zombies, they show riot footage, and then, like, people who have, like, blood in their mouth, and it's like, oh my god, this is a zombie, and it's like, no, it's just obviously someone who had too much fun with the Kool-Aid packets and decided to have a, a, a fun time. I'm losing momentum because I don't know what to say anymore. We see a man being COVID safe, staying indoors, exercising, and listening to the news about COVID. But sadly, he's low on food and has to venture out. He manages to make it to a mall where normal people, including people in hazmat suits, are not wearing masks, hi, and also zombies. You think people would be able to keep them out, or I don't know, guards, police, the army? Get used to this, folks. Get 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 real used to this. Get used to this because get 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 used to this. Oh, something fell behind me. That's not good. But get used to this. Get used to this. No, but for real, like anytime they show like zombies coming around them, all you see is shaky cam, shaky cam. Nothing is happening. Actually, like they show something is happening, but you can't exactly tell what it is. So it's like oh, shaky cam, shaky cam. Yes, you gotta show because apparently you can't show people biting each other, even though it's like. It doesn't really matter because, like, we know they're getting eaten because they scream. The man manages to make it out of the mall and into the parking garage where he runs into some zombies. He runs back inside the mall towards the long hallway and is trying to hold the zombies off. And we jump to another man, Canem. Canem and his wife and his child. Canem is called back to work and his wife is not happy. But that doesn't matter because we're back to Scott. Also, the guy's name is Scott. Just in case you didn't know. Oh, smokes. Smoking kills. Good to know. Scott sleeps in his car to avoid the zombies and also, again, is starving. One of the zombies just happens to fall on top of the car he's in and for some reason Scott gets out and runs. Like, dude, we don't know if they could see, hear, or smell better than humans and you weren't making any noise, so why the hell would you get out? He runs again and manages to trap them via the gate and then yells. Is that really necessary? We catch up with Canem, who I think is a soldier, but I can't tell. All we know is that he went to Afghanistan, but that's about it, really. Him and a bunch of other guys are traveling with scientists. I think they're wearing lab coats, so I can only assume, and come across a flipped-over car. Canem and his buddies stop suddenly when they see a little girl who is clearly a zombie. You can't fool me. When people stop believing that these lone little girls 
that just happen to be in front of our main character and just stand there. When people stop believing that those are not zombies, wake me up. A horde of zombies come. Oh, hi! Nice of you to visit! And it becomes a fight between the soldiers and the zombies. The soldiers begin turning, and the only thing to do, besides shooting them, is to try and escape after you've been bitten and bite the scientist. That last one didn't sound right. So somehow, the zombies go after one of the scientists. Sure, she's fine. And Canem and his partner are playing the blame game when Canem calls head office and says, Hey, chief, uh, we kind of lost everyone through zombies. Head office is like, Hey, the, the one scientist is alive and is the only one to save humanity because she knows how to stop the virus. And also, we took no precautionary measures to uh, keep her and the others more safe. We're kind of stupid. <laughs> Scott saves the scientist, Allison, from a zombie. And can you guess the two actually don't get along? Seriously? Who doesn't have a fuck? Yeah, seriously. Shut up. Shut the fuck up now, okay? You're gonna get us both killed. The reason why they start off on the wrong foot is because Scott does not believe in technology as being good. Phones being tracking devices. Yes, unlike money, your social security, where you work... Uh, cameras, like, in normal places. Um, let's see here, um, money, uh, your DNA, the fact that you're in a registry in police, hospital, etc. records. No, but the phones have tracking devices in them. Or masks, com d depending on who you talk to nowadays. Well, maybe I can go around. It would be nice if the it would be nice if the boss actually had a tripod so that way he could actually focus instead of uh, having to go to one place or another. Oh God! Like, wouldn't it just be great to focus on your people like this, and when they walk, you do this? But instead, they have it like this. Uh, get used to shaky cam, folks. <laughs> I'm gonna get sick. Oh no, my camera! No, no. Stay still, camera. I'm going to skip a bit, and by a bit, I mean 20 minutes. I mean, here's why. Allison and Scott walk around and argue because Scott is, Scott's weird and going into shelter mode and Allison needs to get back to the lab and save the world. Canem and his partner basically follow the trail. Allison and Scott left behind and yeah. But I will reveal what we know. Two months ago, the first case was found. Then the ice melted in Antarctica, which had prehistoric animals inside and most likely had the virus. So basically, whatever the beginning spewed at us. Um, bat soup. Now, I'm saying this now, this did not happen in two months, like, at all. Not two months at all. Like, for real. Let me give you an example. Scott, who has been living out in this woods for probably quite some time, seems to suddenly be like a wilderness adventurer. Yeah, this did not happen in two months. I refuse to believe this happened in two months. Because in two months, we already have... Scientists who can cure this, which if this was real, I wish we had that. And also, not only that, but for Scott, it seems like we have three multiple times where he's out at the mall and then suddenly these things attack. The second time when he's sleeping in a car and having to run away, like again, by closing the gate on him. And then the third time is when he's actually out in these woods. So in a month, you're telling me he did all that. No, I refuse to believe this. No, like, for real. This this is how it goes. Scott and Allison go somewhere. Canem and his partner aren't too far behind. Zombies. <laughs> Allison and Scott seem to be getting along all right as they hear gunshots. Canem and his partner do as well, heading down as Allison and Scott find a bunch of guys with guns killing zombies. Allison goes to talk to them and ask them for help. Also, don't know why, but they're drunk and shooting guns. I didn't know we teleported to the United States. Oh, oh, a mission. Oh, right, yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it a mission. <sighs> Forgive me, though, because uh, you two don't look like Whoa. there's many of you. Or is there some others hiding in the darkness somewhere? We're the only ones left. Oh, oh I get it now. Oh, do those monsters scare you, honey? Hey, those sons of a bitches get you bad. Oh, by the way, you don't happen to have some water and some extra ammo by any chance? Oh, well, of course. Anything for my new friends, hell. 
I don't like where this is going. Also, Allison said she needed the guy's phone to call someone. She doesn't. So, I tend to believe that she actually is not up for saving the world like she had said she was. And possibly, and this is a fact that I've already seen this movie, but I think she possibly couldn't be. Because if you are really desperate, you would be begging to have this phone. But you're not. Let's get the fuck out of here, okay? Oh no, zombies attacking people in the open after they've had drinks and they're screaming, shouting, shooting things up. It's almost like this was a thing set up for disaster. Oh, woe is me. How could we have forsaken this? Mentioning this now be before we move on to Scott and Allison, Canem and his partner, who are hot in their trail, get surrounded by zombies because of the gunfire by the drunk idiots. They use their guns, right? And then just suddenly pull out knives and start breaking arms and kicking in faces. They just do this. Regardless, that one douche, I believe the leader of the drunkards, finds Kanem and his partner. And instead of helping them, he points his shotgun around until his partner sneaks around and tells him to drop the shotgun. While zombies are most likely around. But oh no, they just want to know where Allison is. And he tells them. Good to know he... Is not dangerous, even though he's possibly drunk. But we also find out that Allison and Scott are going nowhere close to the destination, like at all. From what the guy says is, she said she was going to Baxton. Baxton? Are you sure? I I don't know, man. She she said she had some sort of mission. You mean to tell me that Scott is not a walking GPS tracker? A man who's lived in this wilderness for such a short time, and he's not a Cub Scout? Oh, to humanity. How could you do this to a Scott? How could you lead us such in a direction? Cutting back to Allison and Scott, it's snowing. So, we're in May, and it's snowing. Welcome to Indiana. They escape some more zombies and begin bickering. Fun. But we get some shocking details that Scott has killed someone. That someone was while he was in Afghanistan. There, he shot a kid who had a grenade launcher who was most likely a child soldier. Now, for everyone's sake, I'm not going to get into how awful this is, considering how Allison just goes, Ugh, you had to kill someone and a kid? It's not like he wanted to. He was told to kill people. Also, it's Afghanistan. Not a lot of the times can you just say, Hey, I'm going to let this kid go. He's a child soldier. That is most likely what he was. I'm not going to get in the nitty gritty. A lot of people probably already know this by now. But it's It's been years and years. But for real. Like it's been happening years and years. And it, like that shocking news now is like, oh my god, you got to shoot kid. It's not that prominent to not hear this from Afghanistan. For real. And also, if you are so hurt about it, why did you still stay with him? He even is hurt about having to do this. Like, he didn't want to shoot this kid. He didn't. He's fucked over for it. He knows he is. Like, you should be more worried that this guy, who obviously has PTSD about something like this, is with you. But at the same time, he seems to be your best option, considering he has the most logic in this situation. Just pointing out, not going to get any more in detail about Afghanistan and how... The war there is awful, and how awful some of the stuff in Afghanistan is. Just After that dark twist, Allison and Scott managed to finally make it to the destination, a small district of homes. What? Allison and Scott get inside the house, and... If you're wondering what happened to the drunk leader, he's dead. He tried hot-wiring a car, a bunch of zombies came, dragged him through the window. Like, instead of, I don't know, accelerating the car, he was dragging out the window. And he also didn't roll the windows, so, um, not my problem. That's kind of your fault. Anyway, Allison finds one of the girls Sarah has turned, while Charlie, her daughter, is alive. So it wasn't a mission to save the world, but to get to her family. It's also hinted that Sarah and Allison were dating 
neat, but that wasn't important. Scott is rightfully pissed and goes to leave, but Charlie actually gives him a tiny potty plant and he stays. How fucking wholesome. <laughs> More zombies come and sadly, this is the end for Scott and Kanem's partner. Scott was eaten by zombies and the partner was turned. It was almost the end for Kanem as well until Allison leaves her daughter and saves him. Dumbass. They get into a car and drive off and... this 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 is for the beautiful ending of this movie that you gave us for sequel baiting oh it brought a friend good camera angles showing how lone scott is is done very well i liked how everything was just experienced how scott found it and how panic is just everywhere as well i like how they use the height shots from the slenderman 2018 movie that most likely isn't theirs, but it's still a pretty shot. The amount of zombies are actually incredible, and even so, ha have good makeup as well. Everyone has a large supply of ammo, just... Actually, that's just kind of funny how it never comes back up, except for near the end. Bad. I have a suggestion. Now, this movie is about zombies, correct? Then do a zombie movie. You don't need COVID in the title. Yes, clicks and money, but... But honestly, have it about... Have it be about Cam, who's on a mission to take these scientists to the lab when zombies attack. And the one last scientist is the key to saving them, which could honestly work. I also have an issue with the zombies. In some series, they are blind but can hear well, like The Last of Us. Or how about The Walking Dead zombies? Or what about High School of the Dead? These zombies pick and choose what to be immune to and what their strengths are. So some are fast for no reason, some have agility, then some are blind or have great sight. It would be cool to give them the names of these categories, like the blind ones would be the weakest, but the ones with speed are the most dangerous. I get it, zombie movie, but come on, make it interesting. I got blood, I got death, give me some more pizzazz. There are no timestamps. With Scott, it is clear that he has multiple dates from when he leaves to get food, which is probably near the beginning of the outbreak, from when he slept in the car, which was maybe possibly in the middle of this, and meaning Allison was long into the future because he calls part of the woods his territory. I bring up this because Canem doesn't seem to be in multiple timestamps. He just has one. What if this was just Canem or just about Scott? If you're going to go into two people's lives, do this. Go into the beginning of each. What was Canem like? We saw that he had a wife and a kid. What was up with them? What about Scott? He lived alone and did whatever. So what was his life like? I don't know any of these people. I know Canem's wife more than him. She was caring and worried about her husband. Canem, he swore and worried about a zombie girl. That's pretty much it. Scott is worse because his character is old and hates technology and the government was funny enough. Both Canem and Scott going to war in Afghanistan, but only Scott getting to tell the detail about what he had done there. I didn't know Canem's partner's name until the credit. It's Johnson. And also, sequel baiting. Really. No, really. Also, Allison talked about how she was humanity's only hope and then just goes away from the main mission and goes to find her kid and girlfriend, wife, I don't know. Like, what the fuck, man? I'm with Scott. I'd be pissed too.